Welcome to Hot or Not. This is a new sort of series where we'll be taking questionable products and seeing if they are worth it or just another gimmick. And the whole purpose of the Hot or Not video is to find out if they are hot or not, so that is the goal throughout the video in a review type fashion. And the first product is the iView Horizon 1080p POV camera glasses. They look ridiculous, I know, but the whole purpose of this video is to see if these are actually another good way to capture point of view footage that are directly from what you would be seeing or if they are just a waste of $150. Let's begin. Most of this video will be putting these glasses to the test in different scenarios, but before we get into that, I wanna just go through a quick overview so you know what we're dealing with. The first thing you'll notice is just how thick these sunglasses are. It sort of makes sense since they have to pack all the camera and computing hardware inside the body, but they are seriously big. On the right side, you have a button that acts as the power button and the recording button. Beneath that, you have the micro SD card slot for storage, and for some ridiculous, illogical reason, a mini USB port. And lastly, on the inside, they have a reset button and LED light. On the left side, you have a button that's there just for symmetry reasons and doesn't actually do anything. And on the front, you have the camera unit as well as sunglass shades. Quick note on those sunglass shades, for some reason, when looking through them at a screen, they block out all of the warm colors and leave you with a really blue image. I have no idea why, but it's worth noting. And with that out of the way, let's begin the testing process. I want to test two things here. First is the advertised POV action style sport recording, which is their target market. But I also want to see if these POV glasses could be a tool for me in creating videos with a nice POV shot uh, when I'm doing unboxings or demoing or just showing something on a product. So let's begin. All right, so this is recording in nice studio lighting in the office. Uh, you can see it on the RF100. This is what it looks like when they're on your face recording. They look kind of ridiculous, uh, but what can you do? And um, we actually did test footage of this scene and the video looked horrible. So you're probably thinking right now, wow, that video looks horrible. And uh, so this is what a black product looks like. You can see how much detail it's picking up. Um, this is really good lighting. Again, uh, the glasses really just don't pick it up well. And then this is what a white product looks like. And um, really just not impressive video quality. But, you know, I might, it might be a little bit better when we go outside with natural light. So take one last look, black product, white product. And uh, it's really good lighting around me, so it should look really good, but it doesn't. So now let's go outside where there's sunlight and a lot of natural light and uh, see if it looks a little bit better. You can see with the first clip that um, even though it had perfect lighting and it was in a studio environment, which is like perfect when using a normal DSLR or anything, the video looked horrible, white balance is way off. Uh, maybe the LED strips kind of confused the white balance, but um, you can see that it's so grainy on the black, it, it just looks absolutely horrible. And then even the white blue microphone just doesn't look good. And that's a little disappointing because those are absolutely ideal recording conditions and it still looks just horrible. But again, they weren't made for that type of shot. I just thought that could be a huge benefit if they were good at that shot. All right, so we're outside. It is overcast, so there's not a lot of sunlight, but it is pretty bright outside and it's natural light that's well dispersed. So we'll see how this works. Yes, they still look ridiculous on my head. Um, I think you can't really get around that. They just look ridiculous in general. So we have my phone to look at, and uh, hopefully it's perfectly in frame. It does go a little bit more downwards than I was anticipating, so you can see my phone in the case. Uh, you can see, I guess this is with the screen on. You can see what that looks like. Maybe a little more brightness will help. I don't know how well you can even see the screen. And again, the case. And uh, yeah, so. We'll see if it looks any better than um, it did inside. And uh, let's move on to the next test, which is driving in a car. So the video outside is a little bit better than inside. Um, it didn't have to have as much trouble with the white balance or the lighting or anything. Very full, natural lighting. So it looks a teeny bit better, still just not good. Uh, grainy, even though it's really light and just not sharp. So it's, I would never use it as B-roll in one of my videos, but it is a little bit better. Uh, then will be conditions inside at least. Put your sunglasses on yet again. Check myself, oh my God, these look ridiculous. So now I'm gonna be driving, see how the glasses handle that. I know it's not like an action sport, but um, a lot of people like vlog and stuff in the car and I guess this is one way of showing a drive. You could do a time-lapse. They do have a time-lapse functionality um, where it only takes a picture every whatever seconds. So you could do that if you're taking a long car drive. And that would actually probably be pretty interesting to see how it looks. Um, so yeah, this is 
Hello, family. So this is what it looks like while driving. I'm, it's interesting, I can't wait to see what it looks like looking through the window, if it gets even more distorted. If you can see anything at all right now, uh, my head and my eyes are looking straight ahead at the road. I honestly have no idea what the camera is capturing, which is, uh, you know, oh well. It would be interesting if they could, like, put little marks on the sunglass shades that would indicate where the frame is. So you can make sure that whatever you're looking at is in the frame. But I don't know, maybe that would vary depending on the angle they're being worn at. So, uh, yeah, this has been fun driving. Let's get on to uh, longboarding, which I'm not very good at. So driving is actually not that bad. I think it's the best scenario that we tested because uh, everything is far away and through the windshield, so you don't expect it to be that sharp anyway. So it didn't even look that bad. So if you had a long, uh, long car drive and you use these to record a long video or a time lapse, I think that could actually end up looking sort of cool, but the head shaking where the camera moves a lot and the tilting, that does get distracting to watch. So still, not perfect. We out here in the outdoors with a longboard. Not very good at longboarding, but let's give them a try and see how they handle all this intense action sports that's about to take place. So, there we go. It's recording. Hopefully it looks good. Last but not least, longboarding, the intense action sports that we do here at MS Tech. Um, I mean, it looks okay. A, a GoPro would look better. Um, I don't really see, like, I don't see the benefit of using this and having a perfect POV shot uh, for something like this rather than using a GoPro. Won't be a perfect POV shot, but it'll look a whole lot better. You just mount it on your helmet. It'll just be a little bit off. And um, I just, I don't think this video quality is really good enough to use. For any purposes it's just it's pretty disappointing especially with how big and thick these sunglasses are you would expect they could pack in a little bit better image quality so what have we learned today i think it's safe to say that these are not hot sunglasses not even well they do look horrible but they aren't hot in terms of functionality either but they could easily improve on what they have here the first thing i would say is use a smartphone camera there are seven millimeter thick smartphones that have image quality a million times better than this so if they use one of those modules and those image processing instead of this bulky thing, they could get a lot better image quality, maybe not as wide angle, but a lot better and usable image quality. That would also help slim the body down. And then the other thing I would say to improve upon is if they use like a gyroscope on the inside of the sunglasses here, so the camera is always upright instead of tilting with head movement or if they're tilted on your head, then that would also be a whole lot better. And with better image quality and that gyroscope, they could charge more. They could reach a different target market, charge three or $400, and it might even be a product worth buying. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more content. And as always, stay classy. This is empty.